A very good morning to all. Looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for 7th Jan. On the front page you have JNU students staff warned vice chancellor removed. So blame game begins between ABVP that is Akhil Bharti Udhyarthi Parishad and JNU students union over violence on the campus that left 34 injured. So we saw yesterday headlines that uh, un that masked when boys and girls they entered the campus and with stones and rods and hit students injuring them then here you have delhi poll on feb 8 counting on feb 11 so legislative assembly elections of delhi have been announced by the central election commission so here you can see it will be held in the month of february and the chief election commissioner hopes police will control violence And it is uh, left parties which have said that vice chancellor in, in JNU was complicit in the violence. And she also had a role to play. He knew about it. On page 4 you have plea against digi locker rules. Center told to reply. So the Delhi High Court has a petition before it and it has sought response from the central government on this. This is with respect to digi locker which is government's online document storage facility app. So, the petition is regarding the point that this DigiLogger facility does not have a nomination system. So, that means uh, if you cannot take, the, you know, you cannot take the documents, then who would be your nominee? Like, who would get access to them? So, like after death or so. So, here you can see. The plea is by Kusum Arora, who claims to be a poet and author of short stories. She argued that not allowing a user to nominate a successor or ayah to operate the facility on her or his death was arbitrary and unconstitutional. So, this is very important. DigiLocker rules 2016 have been, uh, have been in place and uh, you know, information technology, preservation and retention of information of intermediaries providing digilocker facility rules as such these do not provide for nomination facility and you should know detail about digilocker too it's a flagship initiative of NITI that is Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology under the Digital India program and the issued documents in digilocker system are deemed to be at par with original physical documents on page 7 you have 5 billion dollar Foxconn plant deal scrapped. So, Maharashtra Industries Minister announced that this deal with Foxconn Technology Group to build an electronics manufacturing plant has been cancelled in Maharashtra. So, Foxconn is said to be the world's largest contract manufacturer of consumer electronics and it has decided not to go ahead with its commitment to invest around 5 billion dollars, that is around 35,000 crore rupees in Maharashtra as was proposed in the MOU which was signed with Maharashtra government in 2015. And the reason it gives is uh, its internal dispute, Foxconn's internal dispute with Apple as such. And also it says prevailing global economic conditions and better performance by its competitors and internal disagreements with Apple are the reasons why the company is opting out. On page 8 you have Cattle festival turn, festivals turn Jalikattu events in Kuppam. So, this is regarding cattle festivals. So, earlier Tamil Nadu's uh, Jalikattu festival has been quite fam famous. So, it's a bull taming festival which has even seen Supreme Court ruling on it saying that it harms the cattle. But the central government has amended the protection of, uh, uh, protection of animals act. Prevention of cruelty to animals act has been amended. And it has been allowed to function, Jalikattu. But then there are other cattle festivals in South India too. Like this one being spoken of is in Kuppam area. So this here you can see is in Chittu in Andhra Pradesh. So here now cattle festival is being held and it is being publicized. The organizers are publicizing events and detailed information is circulated on social media. So this earlier considered as inferior version of Jalikattu but now they are on par. So, you should know about Jallikattu and these other cattle festivals as such. Then on page 9 you have, new satellites will help Gaganyan crew. So, this is uh, ISRO chief 
Kesevan, who said that uh, new satellites which have been launched will be beneficial for Gaganyaan mission, the manned mission to space which India plans. Astronauts can be fully and continuously in touch with mission control throughout their travel through these satellites. So, this is Indian Data Relay Satellite System, which is a set of satellites that will track, send and receive information from other Indian satellites. So, this will aid the crew of Gaganyaan mission. So, we can be able to maintain contact with the mission control. So, two IDRSS, that is Indian Data Relay Satellite System, satellites has been already begun and the first satellite is proposed to be launched in this year, second one in 2021. On the editorial page, the first editorial is the mask of anarchy. So, this is regarding the JNU attack by masked uh, mob as such, you can see. So, this uh, it says couldn't have been carried out without the connivance of those in power and ABVP is blamed for it which is uh, student uh, student party of uh, having affiliation to BJP and this is exit Iraq. So, this is the resolution which we saw yesterday on front page passed by Iraqi parliamentarians. So, this is asking USA to exit from Iraq after the attack on Iranian military general in Iraq, in Baghdad. So, it says having overstayed its welcome in Iraq, the US should leave without provoking Iran further. And here you have students in the vanguard of democratic struggle. So, this article talks of how socially sensitive students on campuses across the country are acting as powerful bulwarks against Hindutva forces. And here you have challenges to Hindutva's new avatar. So, this talks about how intra-party democracy is weakening and this can adversely affect BJP's strength on the ground. And this is what happened in Jharkhand too, where it could not win the legislative assembly elections. And on the op-ed page you have, the US is weakened by Soleimani's killing. So, this is regarding Iranian military general Soleimani. After he been killed, it is said Trump's recklessness has isolated US further and deepened anxiety in Israel and Saudi Arabia because the region has been affected. And this is a case for including Tulu in the 8th schedule. So, you should know about 8th schedule of the constitution. This is very important. The 8th schedule presently has 22 languages, Indian languages. So, there are other languages also here. It is Tulu language which is being spoken of. It is said placing all deserving languages on an equal footing will, will promote social inclusion and national solidarity. So, Tulu is not an official language in India or in any other country, but efforts have been made to include it in the 8th schedule. So, so, here you should know about Tulu language as such too. So, here you can see. So, Tulu linguistic majority areas are presently in the uh, regions of Tulu Nadu, which comprise of Dakshin Kannada and Udupi in Karnataka and northern parts of Kasargod district of Kerala. So, this is where Tulu language is spoken. So, there are many languages. You can see the list of languages which are there in the 8th schedule have been mentioned. Like Sanskrit is a language present in the 8th schedule, but has only 24,000. 821 speakers presently. Manipur is, Manipur is also under the 8th schedule. It has only 17 lakh, uh, 61,000 around speakers. So, there is a case being made for Tulu language. It is a Dravidian language. Then below you have doing away with ad hoc teachers. So, it says the system of appointing ad hoc teachers has endangered, engendered a sense of despondency among temporary and contractual teachers. So, so, how ad hoc teachers have been appointed? So, this is sudden, unexpected, and short vacancy which may arise out of sudden sickness or death, as such. So, or an abrupt leave taking place. So, these uh, ad hoc teachers are appointed, but then there are already temporary and contractual teachers whose positions get affected. In page 12, you have NPR data collection in Orisha in April. So, NPR exercise will be initiated in Orisha in April 2020 and this NPR uh, details being sought are uh, having many questions on parents about when and where they were born. And here you have 
Supreme Court bets for children left out of Assam NRC. So Supreme Court has said that uh, children who have been left out and the, their names have not come in NRC in Assam, they won't be sent to detention camps. But according to the rules, they should be sent to detention camps. But Supreme Court has intervened and said they won't be. On international page, you have House to vote on limiting Trump's war powers. So, US lawmakers have uh, decided to bar president from conducting a campaign against Iran without obtaining approval from Congress. That is the US parliament. The US parliament is called Congress. And here you have China's People's Liberation Army begins major military drill in Tibet. So, it displays its advanced tank and howitzers. So, this is its military drill here in Tibet. On business page you have services sector activity growth at 5 month low and this is regarding stocks falling. So, the stocks keep fluctuating on a daily basis too. So, this is there. This is important services sector activity growth in services sector but this is also private sector survey data which is being provided and here you have stressed urban cooperative banks to face PCA like curbs. So, that is prompt corrective action which is for banks. So, now urban cooperative banks would also be facing such curbs. So, RBI's action includes cancellation of banking license as such. And this is oil tops $1.70 as Iran Trump trade threats. So, West Asia is under crisis presently after the US action against Iranian military general who was assassinated. Qasem Soleimani. So, now West Asia which accounts for almost half of the world's crude production. So, because of these fears now oil prices are rising. And this is RBI buys sells 10,000 crore securities each. So, this is now third special open market operation which has been conducted and RBI has bought 10,000 crore of three long term securities while selling a similar amount of three short term ones. So, this is to bring in more liquidity in the economy. So, that is it. These are the important headlines. For detailed coverage of current affairs, you can visit our website asia.com. Thank you.